All right, good evening, everyone. We continue today's press conference. We have forward Andres Jason. If you'd like to have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get started in the room here, Scott. Hey, thanks for the time as always. I appreciate it. Uh, get a come from behind tie the other day. You got a three game homestand right now. Talk a little bit about the momentum of New England carrying into a tough match you got on Saturday. Thanks. Yeah, um, I think New England's always a good team, especially the way they play. Um, we have a lot of players with a lot of quality, so I think that was a really good result on the road, um, especially at the end of the game. I think we were the team pushing and trying to get the win, so I think we felt good in New England, and we can carry that momentum into three home games um, where I think we feel really comfortable, and we love playing at home in front of our fans, and um, generally we were able to get really good results, so I think carrying that momentum into these home games can really help us make a push in, in the East to get towards the top. Glenn? Andres, Nick uh, talked about yourself and Justin a little bit and about uh, the players who are trying to almost force their way into playing time. And he basically said that that's what you have to do in terms of how you're approaching each day on the field, off the field. Um, can you talk about how that motivates you and um, how you think it's going for yourself? Yeah, I think um, at our team, we have a lot of players with a lot of quality. Um, I think players show that each week. So I think in order to break through, you have to show that in training and in games. And when you get your moment, you have to you have to take it. So I think for me, that would come with, you know, scoring a goal or creating chances like that. And I think as long as I keep working hard in training and um, showing that, I think I'll get chances. And then, you know, it's up to me to take them and really cement my place in the team. Um, and that's going to come through goals, assists, stuff like that. Is that a difficult proposition? I mean, you've been here for a while now. You're almost a veteran. but um... You've been in and out of the lineup over that time. Yeah, I think it's difficult for sure. Um, you know, if it was easy, then we'd be playing every minute. Um, but I think with a team like us, especially when there's so many players with quality in the front, uh, it's definitely difficult to break in. Um, so I think this year I've been doing really well in training. I feel confident and I feel I'm at the level. So I think I just need to, you know, take that last step and and really break through. Hey, uh, I know you're a Connecticut guy growing up. Do you live in the city these days or do you live in New York? Uh, no, so I still um, live at home and at school. So I have a place at school. Um, so I'm finishing up school. And then once I'm done with school, I think I'll start considering New York and, and different places. But right now I have home and school. So I got those two places. For now. Place. Yeah. If you were to uh, move to New York, where would you think about living? Oof, I don't know. I think uh, James is is thinking about that right now. Um so I'll have to ask him for advice because I think he's been looking at different places. Um, the only thing with New York is, you know, the more into the city you live, like the longer the drive to practice. So you kind of have to balance those two. But, uh, yeah, it'll definitely be something to look into soon. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Anyone on Zoom? I'll follow up with numbers. Okay. Go on. Go ahead. So I want to get back to you forcing your way in. What if scoring goal? If you're an attacking player, it seems like scoring goals is almost the is the most certain way to uh, make your mark. You know, maybe it's in training. You know, and that gives you your chance. And then when you get your chance, is that the way you feel about uh, your position? Like, it, or, or maybe creating chances as well, but but being more frequent in that category. Yeah, I think so. I think I can provide stuff like working hard, running. I think I have a really good engine to run and be able to um, work hard for the team for an entire game. And I think that's advantageous for certain games and certain scenarios. But I think the only way you can really, you know, cement yourself in the team is by, you know, creating, providing goals, assists, which is, you know, the toughest part of the game. But um, the players that we've had in the past that have played every game, like Tati, uh, that's what they gave every game, you know, goals, assists, chances, and I think as a forward, that's what you aim to do. It's difficult, but that's what you want to aim for. And, you know, obviously it's not going to come every game at the beginning, but it should be the goal to, you know, contribute on that end. And on to the Zoom, Michael Andre. Thanks, Andre. Sorry, Esteban, I was having a hard time uh, getting my hand raised before when you asked. Um, Andre, uh, Atlanta poses a very interesting situation. Uh, Tiago Amada is the first uh, current rostered player in MLS to win uh, a World Cup. A lot of times guys who 
one World Cups have come after they've they've uh, they've played, and I, I'm curious for your perspective because your father's Argentinian. This could be one of the few games where there's a, you know, the NYCFC fan base is going to be strong in Yankee Stadium, but there could be a lot of international supporters coming out just to see Tiago and to help uh, celebrate that that uh, World Cup victory. Mentally, how are you preparing for it? Have Have you thought about uh, if the stadium is going to feel different? because uh, it's going to be a unique situation. I think um, throughout our time here, we've played some really good players. Um, you know, Tiago's a really good player with a lot of quality. Um, we know that we've, you know, watched some film, but I think anytime we're at Yankee Stadium, we, we feel our fans, we feel the support, and I don't think that'll be any different. Um, we've played games at Yankee Stadium where, um, you know, teams from Mexico have had support, but I think at the end of the day, um, our fans always come through and they're the ones that you hear throughout the stadium. So we're not too worried about having an environment where we're almost playing an away game at home. I think that's not something that's almost possible at Yankee Stadium. Uh, we love our fans. They always support us. So we're not too worried about that. And final one in the room, John. Uh, hey, a uh, little bit of a different question, but do you have any like soccer idols, anyone that you kind of modeled your game after uh, anything like that? Yeah, I would say like when I was young, Messi was obviously like the big idol. Um, and then as I grew a little older, um, someone I really looked up to was Isco at Real Madrid. So it was tough for me because I was a Barca fan, but I just loved the way he played. I think there were similarities between me and him like physically. And so I think he was someone I tried to model my game after a little bit um, because I thought he was just such a good player. It's a good thing to model after. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Thanks, everyone. Great.